still, still undefeated, claiming league leadership or equal league leadership. If they can. Today saw the clash of unbeaten league heavyweights Essendon and the West Coast Eagles at Windy Hill. The Bombers are always hard to beat at home, but against the top of the ladder Eagles faced a real test. At the MCG, third place Melbourne played host to and fronted up against an improving Footscray combination, which last Sunday won its third match for the season. Two big games from round eight. Exclusive to seven sports on the AFL Today. Yes, a very good evening everyone and welcome to the AFL Today. Highlighted by the blockbuster at Windy Hill, also action from the MCG with Melbourne and Footscray and later the Footy Stop Press, direct from the Herald Sun with Scott Palmer. First to Windy Hill, where two heavyweights of the league met to decide outright leadership of the competition. In perhaps every way it was a promoter's dream. Both teams were unbeaten. Essendon, cast in the mould of the goody, up against the interlopers from interstate and now want finals played in Perth as well. The Bombers were forced to make three changes to the side that beat Carlton last week. Watson, O'Brien and Considine all sidelined through knee problems, replaced by Fox, Flood and Wanganeen. Former Tiger Corey Young making his debut for the Eagles. John Worsfold was replaced in the selected side by Paul Pios, playing by Burns for Essendon. Our commentators are Bruce McAvaney, Peter McKenna and Don Scott. And we join the game early in the third quarter, the Eagles leading by 10 points. Well, they've got Salmon sitting there at full four, but I've been watching him whilst you've been calling, Peter, and he's not moving too quickly or too freely. And Wilson's about to come on for West Coast. And I wouldn't mind betting Langdon off and Wilson on because he really didn't go for that mark. Jared's just told us that Somerville marks a Buick's back on the bench, but he looks as crook as a dog. They're his words. O'Donnell to Bailey. Here's a chance. Bailey can attack. Long way out. Times it magnificently. It rolls through. It's a beauty, that. The dream start. Just what they wanted. The lifting goal, and the Bombers are within four points. Yes, well, Bailey had a shot earlier in the game. A little closer than this, and didn't even score on that occasion. He let it go from the centre square. A good kick. Eagles by four points. They haven't been under a lot of pressure so far this year. Let's see how they respond. Waterman on the half forward line. There's nothing there for the Eagles as Harvey takes the mark. And Michael Long is very, very sick. He's in the forward pocket. So Essendon and a team of walking wounded at the moment. Well, here they go. They're going forward again. Bailey's been excellent. A long kick again. Oh, Salmon can't walk. Look at this. Paul Salmon. And is he going to be paid a free kick and the man can't walk? A holding decision against Locker. I thought a very lucky free kick. It is long. He Michael does not look good at all. Oh, they're the walking wounded, all right. He's got to come off the ground. Don't tell me well, they're going to play. They might have to play with 17 men. And the man about to kick it can hardly walk. Well, what about this? Michael Long is coming to the boundary line. There he is. He's a very sick boy. Now, Paul Salmon, can he kick this from 25 mid? Oh, that hurt. Oh, he's in agony, the man. He's kicked the goal. Oh, he has gone in the groin. He's kicked the great goal, Paul Salmon. That's courage. The Bombers have hit the front by two points. Well, the question is... Will Long come back onto the ground? They're only playing with 17 men, Essendon. Salmon's injured, so you can take that down to maybe 16. Fit players out on the ground. Well, it's high drama here at Windy Hill. It's been a long time since you've seen anything like this. 17 men and Salmon injured, and they've hit the front, the Bombers, and this is the man that's ignited them, Bailey. Can Salmon lift his arms and take a mark? Nearly. He's up. Pressure on him. Lamb. Well, it's done. Well done, he's out. He's got to get under now. Don't tell me he's hurt himself. Well, up a done. little gingerly, but that's what he's got to do. There's Buick, who was knocked out in the second quarter. Or was it the first? My memory's going. Wenganine. Pressure on him. Quick kick by McKenna. Bounces in. 
and I mean the reality is the West Coast trail by two points but they look certainties in the run because Essendon are falling apart left right and centre would you believe that Adrian Burns got up limping as well and he's also got that nick under the eye but uh, well it's a sort of day that heroes might be made here at well, Windy Hill this will be this man has played a great game Bailey Bailey to O'Donnell well, he gets a bad bounce main weary to the half forward line, Harvey traps it. Well done. Yes, it was well done. Greg Anderson, Simon Madden, Chris Danaher can't get the bounce. Turley dragged off the ball. No free kick to Turley. I can't believe it. Anderson to the half forward line. Uh, obviously, you're allowed in modern day football just drag them off the ball when they haven't got it. The ball at half forward. Poor Essendon. They're battling valiantly with these injured players. Somerville gets it down. Oh, tunnel balled out. Guy McKenna, short to Turley. The West Coast. The big advantage is with them now as he kicks to half forward. Langdon. Over the back was Harvey. Oh, Harvey. Taken this by Kemp. Kemp and Hines. Harvey, or well, Spawn lies yeah. on top of the ball. He made did no not attempt make to an get it out. But Peter Cameron was on the wrong side of the pack on that occasion and actually didn't see what was going on. So where's the loose band, Don? Is it That's someone McKenna like up on the back line. Now where's McKenna moved to? He's on the ball now. Kemp, quick handball by Anderson. Bailey again. What a five minutes he's had. He's up. On his chest. Now Shane Hurd, he's coming on. He's got, you remember he did his knee. And he is going to come on. Shane Hurd. He's up. Now can Salmon take this? Well done, Lockyer. Danaher goes to ground, caught by Waterman. Mainwaring rips it away from Burns. One bounce, and again. Shane Hurd's on the ground, he's going up to the forward pocket. His right knee heavily bandaged. Mainwaring wide to Lamb at centre wing. Sumich on a long lead. And it'll be a throw in in the pocket. And I think all he's going to do, Shane Hurd, looking at him, he's going to just prop in the goal square. At least he'll take his man out of the action. But well, they've got two crocs in the goal square, Salmon and Hurd. Well, Salmon's playing up the ground. Madden versus Hines. Hines with the left hand. Peter Matera trying to trap it. He does, but uh, the ball just beats him over the line. And the West Coast haven't woke up, woken up. But Shane Hurd's back on the ground. Well, Guy McKenna's up on the half forward line. He might have to go. Now back he's running there. down. Yes, McKenna's going now to pick him up. Well, that was Anderson to the centre of the ground. The West Coast Pike is brought down. Anthony Danaher a quick hand pass. Turnbull beautifully picked up and a free kick to Essendon for holding the man. It'll go to Somerville, centre of the ground. The Bombers battling hard and the crowd making plenty of noise. Look at the kick from Somerville. A beauty at the back was Salmon. He cannot move. Here's Burns. He's got it, Adrian Burns. He kicks a goal and hooks it and puts it through from behind. So the crowd are light. The 8 7 8 4. What's the report on Michael Long? Jared Healy. Well, the problem is that he's got a suspected broken ribs, and uh, if he put if it was put back on the ground, there's a danger of puncturing a lung. So it's it's definitely like a war zone here, down here in the Essendon area. Hearts kick. Good mark by Lamb. Lose Lewis now on the run. Sumich one out. Good hip and shoulder by oh. Flood, and what a mark! Did he push him out too far from home? But it was a great mark to Anderson. They're inspired. There's no question about that to Isa. They're on a roll here, the Bombers. Corey but... Young about to come on, and Isa was uh, Long was warming up on the boundary. Madden, it's got it. <laughs> They've got to get a break here, Don, because they're playing inspired footy. They've got to get two or three goals in front. And Wilson going off. Wilson going off the West Coast. And here's Madden taking the mark. Corey Young coming back on. Going to be picked up by Mark Harvey. And Michael Long was sprinting around the boundary. Well, this will test him. We thought earlier in the day he might be too far out. He's going to play on. Around Irving. Drop punt. Oh, don't tell me. What a kick! Nine seven to eight four, three to Madden, and surely Don Scott. That's one of the great moments in the game. Oh, I'm just shaking my head in amazement. You'd have to be here and see this. Now this is a good mark. You can see there the pressure from Irving. Now watch this. And what an angle. 
angle, he's put it through. of jets, helicopters, planes, trains and trucks go when they're low on fuel. The same place you do. BP. BP. On the move. McEwen's Super Money Savers are here. With a Stanley 600ml level for just $24.75, a $17 saving. The famous Stanley 13 clear screwdriver set is down to $32.95. Stanley Duralock tape measures $16.95, save $15.55. Rotor 5 tray cantilever toolboxes are now only $37.95. You save $20. Stanley, Australian made tools. McEwen Super Money Savers are products that can't be bought for less anywhere, saving you even more. You can do it with McEwen's cause we've got a million if you are left speechless by your old telephone system, contact Ericsson. Our business telephone systems are designed to keep your lines of communication open so you can close more deals. Seen Pete's new wheels? No. Nah. What is it? It's big. A big what? Big five-seater. Sue loves it. So he didn't get his truck, eh? Yeah. So... What? He got both? Holden Rodeo Crew Cab. Lobster Mornay with fresh garden vegetables. I've made the Mornay sauce with flora salt reduced, so it's light and creamy and not an artificial additive anywhere. Now, cook your lobster. Oh, come on, it's just like a jacuzzi. Mmm. What's this? Vegetable Mornay. With no artificial colours, flavours, additives, flora is one of the best things in the country. The Eagles, though, kicked three goals late in the third quarter to give them a break of six points at the final change. Essendon with Hurd, Long, Salmon and Buick all on the injured list. Could the Bombers come back? We pick up play now. We go back to Windy Hill at the start of the final quarter. It was a thriller. Well, what's in store for us now? We've had it all at Windy Hill today. 67 to 73. West Coast by a goal. Madden. Anderson. You had the feeling that Essendon must kick the first if they got any chance. Wanganeen. Salmon and Lockyer. Salmon's big arms. Hamilton misses it. Well done, Hamilton. He Holds it. it there. Lockyer. Good tackle, but able to break it. Hart with pace. Chips it to Wilson, who should take it. And he does. Will play on quickly. Chips it to Sumich. Who, as Peter told us, has come to centre half forward. Langdon tries to pick it up. He's at full forward with Hines. And it will be a ball up. But would you agree, Peter, they must kick the first Essendon to win? I'll say, if he... If the Eagles get the first uh, one or two goals, I think it could be shut the gate because you can't carry that many injuries and get away with it. There's Hines coming over the top. Anthony Danaher read it well, gets in a quick hand pass. Players swoop in from There's all directions. Good tackling up there by the West Coast. And the umpire will bounce. They really do work hard on their forward line, those forwards, and holding the ball up. It was a great tackle then. And what you've done is trap the ball. It stays there. Game's got to recommence. Peter Cameron bounces it down. Madden has been magnificent. Anthony Danaher around the boundary line and over. David Howlett officiating here at the moment because Chris Mitchell went off very early in the game. The field umpire and it looked like a calf muscle injury. Madden again taps it. There's Matera. And eventually it's over the line again. The scoreboard showing 11-7 to 10-7 in favour of the Eagles. And what way is the wind blowing? Well, we'll never know because you can see there the wind sock being tied down. Quick kick by Kemp. Oh. Lewis, Langdon, or oh, Lewis traps it. Still Lewis. Oh, good give. Missed though by White. Back to Lewis. Caught by Harvey. White snaps for goal. Actually, Bailey should have been penalised early because he had hold of Lewis before the ball got up there. 
And whilst the ball was in flight and Lewis just about to hold, take it, it was Bailey that had him. And lucky not to get a free kick. Cransburg, who had a good third quarter. Irving, oh, so oh. the ball! Oh. Well, you'll never see anything better than that. Oh. <laughs> it's a free kick, put the hands there, look. Oh, on the top of the head and up he goes. Well, they'll talk about that one for 100 years. One of the great marks in the history of the game. High one by Waterman. Now Sumich from centre wing. Peter Sumich, a booming kick to the full forward line, but the mark has been taken by Bailey here, and Lewis having a terrific clash. And pass finds Anthony Denner, who he should kick it long, as he normally does a 60-metre drop punt. Salmon out of the contest, he can't move. Here's Pransberg, can he give up a hand pass? He tries to, but it's taken away by Pike. Don Pike looking for someone to give it to. He's full of running, a couple of bounces. Still going, no one coming at him. Now eventually Bailey had to. It creates the loose man further field, but David Flood puts the pressure on Langdon and forces it over the line. Half forward for the Eagles. They lead by one goal. Those backmen are working hard for the Eagles, but the forwards are just not capitalising on the work that the backmen are doing. Hines versus Madden. Madden, best man on the ground. In my opinion, so far, he has been fantastic. So is Bailey. Chris Danaher. Oh, clever play by Danaher to kick it low and over the line. Not suggesting it was deliberate or anything, Peter. <laughs> I disguised it beautifully. Just a goal in it. West Coast lead. Low scoring game, 11 to 10. Goals have been hard to get since uh, half time. This man has had one of his uh, very best games for a number of years. 10 marks and uh, 14th kick about to come up. Hasn't got a lot of options here, remembering all the injuries that Essen are covering. Somerville from the back. Burns to spawn to Burns. He's got to go all the way with this. Must kick the goal. Drop punt. Good kick. He's kicked. Post. Oh, gee, he looked a chance in the run, didn't it? I'll tell you what, I reckon he ran 25 to 30 metres without bouncing it too, Don. Well, it looked like Wanganeed when he took off. That's his third point. We'll just go down to uh, Jared Healy on the boundary. He's got the umpire, Chris Mitchell. Yes, we've got Chris. What actually happened, Chris? Uh, after a set of bounce the first quarter, I was backing out and got an accidental kick in the uh, calf muscle. It's, it's badly corked and uh, just couldn't go on with the game. How do you think the blokes are going? Well, in a very tight game, they're doing a great job. It's not easy out there at the moment. Ball on centre wing. Kicked away by Izard. Essendon working hard. O'Donnell for the half forward line. Madden versus Irving. Oh, look at Big speed. Simon. Oh, great play. He's going back to try and grab it again. He lays the tackle on Main Wearing. The bounce favours Irving. Anderson in after. Well done, Greg Anderson. Beautiful play. He's well been a great player too. all day. He kicks to the forward line. Can seven mark? No, he can't. Oh, he clutches his groin again. He's gone. As we've seen Lockout. Kicking it across the heart, and Paul Salmon is... They're going to bring Hurd back on, Essendon. They're going to bring Hurd on. I think they'll have to take Salmon all along off. The ball on centre wing. West Coast through Wilson. Kick it wide. Hamilton putting the pressure on Matera, and that was good defensive play. And Long is coming off. Long coming off, and Hurd's going on. And they're going to have a few missing next week, the Bombers, I'd say. They've got some big matches coming up. Probably none bigger than this, though. White's quick kick, Anthony Danaher. This defence has done brilliantly since uh, halfway through that second quarter. Wanganeen, Pike over the top, no free kick. Good handball by White, back to Kemp. Bounce, well, he ran out of options up forward. No one worked. Well done, Kemp. Able to get it back. Now O'Donnell, swamped uh, firstly by Lamb. Well played by uh, Fox, back with Lamb, Langdon. Flood and Sumich. Turley, is that going to go? Turley's got it. Great tackle by Harvey. Play on call. Danaher. Yeah, terrific efforts in this last quarter. Well, it's been a magnificent game, hasn't it? Bailey to Eza. To Harvey. Well played, Harvey. He did it brilliantly. He was able to create an opportunity. No, spawn, I should say. Left foot. Salmon. Locker and a throw in in the pocket. Well, that's all Salmon's got to do. Get in there and just contest because Lockyer would have taken the mark had Salmon not run in with him. He forced Lockyer to put it over the boundary line. 
Simon Madden to do the ruck work. 10-8 to 11-7. The Bombers hanging on valiantly. They can't just quite bridge the gap at the moment. Hart gets it to Main Wearing. Main Wearing hand pass over back over his head. Izard runs at it. He's got the pace. Can they score here? Izard sets it up in front of goal. Salmon comes from the back. Can't quite hang on to it. Here's Kranzberg looking for O'Donnell. It sits for him. Oh, he slips over. He's still got it. Gary O'Donnell from 40 oh, metres. Well, Kicks into the man. On it goes. There's Burns. Gets in a hand pass. Wangadine charging in after it. Now it's O'Donnell. Oh, this is great stuff. And also good umpiring to let it go. There was some terrific efforts there by both teams. And the umpire just let it go on. Here, That's here, terrific Don. terrific stuff. Isn't that good then? Seeing these tiggy touch with free kicks. And the other thing is both players just throwing themselves in. It's just good stuff. From uh, both teams, it was really brilliant, wasn't it? O'Donnell in the thick of all of that. And the reality is that West Coast lead by five points. Well played Irving, gives it to Kemp. Good smother by um, Somerville. Langdon over the top. He's uh, hip and shoulder by Wilson was brilliant to pave a way for Lewis. Sumich. Oh, he's a free kick again. Oh, oh come on, Peter Cameron. Cameron. Well, an amazing decision or lack of decision. And Essendon might get out of it. Floods kick to Anderson. Anderson's got Bailey running. Ron Bailey's got to run harder. He's got Harvey as well, who should use Bailey now. Bailey can run it all the way. One bounce, can he kick another big goal? Sets himself, goes for home, kicks it to the goal square. Touched. Can I now ask? That goes back to that, that full forward line. That was the free kick to Simic because the identical free kick was paid in the third quarter down the other end of the ground. Well, I'll say one thing. Simic should have got four free kicks today with Peter Cameron that he has not got. Have a look at that for a shove in the back and a trip. You name it. Peter Simic can't believe it. There's Guy McKenna, Mame Waring. Oh, brilliant play, sensational play, Mame Waring. On the McKenna, he's still going down with the ball. McKenna to half forward, the leader's on by oh, Hines, strong. and he takes a great finger tipper. Hines, the leader's on. The short one, Sumich, no mark. Races in after it again, he's frustrated. Lays the tackle and the free That's kick given away against Sumich, oh. and I reckon that is murder. Well, Bailey's got the free kick. He's really lifted his health, hasn't he, today, Dean Bailey? Played a great game, Bailey. He's gone out the centre wing. No mark to spawn. He's bumped off it by Main Waring. He's grabbed by Waterman. Waterman's gone short. He found Turley. Look, oh, he's, he's dropped the sitter. Turley looking for someone to give it to. He's found a man. And that was Mitchell White. On it goes to Turley. A wobbly kick to the full forward line. Out comes Somerville. He trips over. Players charging in after it. Flood. Back it comes oh. to Danaher. Now, is that a free kick? No. It's too fancy. Play on as it's grabbed by Wilson. Wilson, a high, booming kick. A beautiful kick, Wilson. It's a goal. So, what do you think? Well, it certainly is a very attractive offer. Salary, travel, it's all very generous. But I've still got this ambition to do it for myself. I've already got a couple of irons in the fire. And if I don't try now, then I'll never know. ABS brakes, 16 valve intercooled turbo engine. Would you uh, care for a drive? Well, on the other hand, I could learn a lot from you. The Galant VR4. She dared to pose nude in the 1930s. She's been linked to men in Melbourne's high society. What we don't know is who murdered Molly Dean. Why have the police records mysteriously disappeared? And why have the police reopened the case? It all makes sense in the Sunday age. Evening, Chief. Did you know Citibank's cash management account pays you 14% per annum? 14%? 14% for the first 30 days, plus a checkbook and Citibank card access. That's smart. That's Citibank.
this winter, it will be comforting to know Gold Air is keeping your home cosy and warm. There's a Gold Air electric heater specially designed for every room. Choose from Australia's most comprehensive range of top-selling heaters, Gold Air. Designed to be the best, Gold Air. Gold Air heaters are available at Chandler's Appliance Stores. A new age of terror calls for a special breed of warrior. Chuck Norris, Lee Marvin, in a spectacular adventure. The Delta Force, tonight. This girl has a secret. The cops are on my case, Lenny. They could turn up any time. But to help a dying girl... You mean she's going to be hooked to a machine for the rest of her life? She may have to give up more than her freedom. A living relative can donate a kidney. An agonising choice. Can you do something to help my little sister? On a country practice, Monday on 7. 10, 9, 12, 7. Great goal by Wilson from the 50 metre line. Wanganeen, O'Donnell. Chips it away. Spawn and Madden the targets. Hart and Burns. Hart kept his feet well. A really class player. Gives it to Lockyer. Lockyer goes wide. Langdon getting the front spot against him though was uh, Fox. Well the done, handball Kemp. by Kemp. Wilson. Somerville out of the chop it off. Ezard, good tackle by White and also by Kemp. See, they're asking Madden to play a big game. He's gone to centre half forward now. Being picked up by Ryan Turnbull. He's rucked all most of the day and now he's got to work hard at centre half forward with Somerville on the ball. Big test now for Somerville. He wins that hit out against Langdon. Hamilton forces it on. O'Donnell caught. Can't quite crash his way through. Wangan in cleverly, creating opportunities. Harvey. Well, he had Kranzberg running. He's a good kick. Oh. And then he kicks it poorly. Hamilton White beats him. Gee, if he got the ball to Kranzberg, they were in business, weren't they? Dead right. Mitchell White from the centre of the ground. Kicks it to half forward. The lead is on by Wilson. Now, where's Sumich? The lead. Oh, he's been ignored by Wilson. Wilson going wide. It was a poor kick by Peter Wilson. That was not good play. And the mark has been taken by Fox. This is Mike Le Essendon in. He should have kicked it to Sumich. A one-on-one -on -one contest. Over the back is Lewis. Getting away from Bailey. He hasn't done that too often today. Here's Anderson who's been a good player. Still got it, Greg Anderson. Good play. Gets his boot to it. To the half-forward line. They just haven't got the numbers, Essendon. Taken away by Irving. Oh, now Burns is down. Well, now Burns is... Oh, oh, he got it right in the mid-ref. Wilson from 55 metres. Set sail for home. Over the back, it's punched away by Fox and through for a behind and, to the Eagles. And back on centre wings, Burns is not too good at all. He took the full force of that kick from Irving, trying to smother the ball off the boot. Now, here it is on replay. Look at this. Irving, a full-blooded kick, and look at Burns. Ooh. Oh, excuse me. Feel it up here. Flood. Get some good distance. Kranzberg early. Mark Kemp, he's done well. And then chips it towards Sumich. Oh, good, Mark. Hard to take when the ball's coming and you're standing flat-footed and some pressure coming from the back. I reckon he's been great, Sumich, under a lot of pressure today. It's kick four. Almost backing back in the end, wasn't he? Well, actually, the West Coast have done particularly well. OK, they, they've slowed down a little bit since quarter time, but the point is they've hung in there and they're starting now to go away with the game because Essendon really have thrown everything at them and they've withstood the pressure. Four goals to Sumich and that's his fifth. And maybe Don the nail in the coffin at 13-8 to 10-9. Well, he hasn't played that many games, Peter Sumich. We see there Adrian Burns on screen. He's averaged between three and four goals a game. Today, five goals, too. It's a good effort, a good effort. For the year, he's kicked 38 goals and 27 points. Not a good conversion rate. Well, we saw a look of relief on the face of Mick Malthouse down in the dugout because there was a real chance that Essendon were getting right back into that. That's Lamb receiving from Turley to the full forward line. Hines races out after it. Mitchell White, he's been in most he's impressive player, too. He can good. play on the main wearing, main wearing. Trying to hook it back in, but has missed to the left. The beauty about Mitchell White is his composure, Peter. He knows, he looks, he's steady just before he gets rid of the ball, whether it be from hand or foot, and usually finds a player. The Eagles by three goals. And we saw uh, former Richmond star Robert Wiley in the dugout with Mickey Malthouse. 
David Flood, Madden the target. O'Donnell misses it. Lamb, Ezard. High one, not going very far. Harvey, Pike at the back. No free kick play. Off the ground, Irving. Langdon, good play there though by Fox to just hold Langdon up. Now Chris Danaher. Oh. Again a poor kick. Wanganee, not much chance here with a couple of taller players at the back now. Main wearing, high tackle on him, not paid. Harvey spins out of trouble. Did a good job there, gave Sport half a chance, but unfortunately the ball had too much momentum. And over the line. And with 11 and a half minutes remaining, you, Don, you just don't know where Essendon are going to get the three or four goals from. That's the problem, isn't it? Well, they're actually three, exactly three goals behind. And uh, yes, where are they going to come from? Because Hurd's down there, hands on hip. He's got a heavily bandaged right knee. Salmon's between he and centre half, at centre half forward, and he can hardly walk. Somerville and Turnbull. Somerville wins it. Kemp. Oh, in the back. Not paid. Kranzberg has had a good game. It's got O'Donnell inside. Gets to him. Pike puts the pressure on O'Donnell to Hamilton. Can he take the tough mark? Well done, Matera. Yes, did it well. Peter Matera, talented player. Has gone short. David Hart. Oh, about four bites, but he got it. Now he's got the loose man. The Eagles will be off and running here. It's Guy McKenna. The chip pass is on. It's a poor one. Unusual for Guy McKenna, and he kicked it straight to Alan Ezard. They're fighting hard, the Bombers. I don't think they can do it personally, but you never know. As Turley hooks it out to Matera. They're full of running. Langdon in front of the pack, over the back, Sumich. The chip kick on the right foot across the face and out of bounds on the full. The Eagles lead by three goals. Not a good bounce for Madden. Bailey looked for a free kick. Still Bailey, but a terrific game. Danaher's made a few mistakes today. Played on the wing for a while to Spawn, to Harvey. Now, can he get it wide? Again, he couldn't do it. Harvey's made a couple of errors under pressure in this last quarter. Kemp. He's done well in this last quarter, Hart. To Hart. Langdon. Well he's done. He's done. Terrific effort against oh. a man who's about, what, uh, 10 or 11 centimetres taller. He did one earlier in the game, which is terrific at a critical time. Still three goals in at 87 to 69. Wilson comes over the top. Picked up by Burns. To centre half forward. Somerville tries to knock it on. Irving. Irving to the half forward line. Dwayne Lamb lopes after it. He gets a shocking bounce. He's caught with the ball. Gets his boot to it. Couple of Essendon players there. Greg Anderson being one of them. Swings onto the left foot but elects to hand pass instead. Anthony Danaher has got Burns sweeping through the middle. Burns kicks long to the half forward line. Oh, there's oh. no one there. And uh, Irving, easy as you like, takes the mark. They just has, haven't got the manpower, isn't it? This is Chris Lewis, captain of the Eagles for the day. The force fold out of it. Now he kicks to Hines. Hines versus Madden. And Hines, one-handed, well. grabs it, straightens up, slams it through for a goal to the Eagles. And they're home. Jane, still in the shower? She'll be ready when the hot water runs out. Vulcan Gas Freeloader. 73 days free gas hot water, year after year. 73 days? Oh, what do you think it is? I don't know. You tell me. I was born under a wand. Now you work out where it came from. The amazing Star Wagon from Mitsubishi. The new way to cook with the Panasonic Genius. True one-touch cooking with the unique piezo sensor that calculates cooking time and power. And if you purchase a Panasonic Genius one-touch microwave upper now, you'll receive this free bonus video cooking tape that includes basic operation, handy hints and recipes to try. Available now at your Panasonic retailer. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high, and don't shake and you're dead. Be afraid of the dark.
From the wrong side of town. Well, why don't you come out with me? There's no way in the world she's having anything to do with a mongrel like that. Revhead's courting trouble. All competitors, take your places. It's the moment of truth for Hayden. National belly flop champion. Win or lose, it's all up to him in Home and Away. 6.30 Monday on 7. See the closest finish yet. Yeah. One wrong answer will lose the match. You know what I've been, I'm wrong. The main event, Sunday on 7. West Coast has kicked three goals in the last quarter. The Bombers haven't been able to manage one. Wanganeen, Pike's tackle good. Lamb tried to get a kick away. Off the ground by Kemp. Burns, probably playing his best game for Essendon today. They've been patient with him. Now Harvey. He's got Somerville loose. He's just got to kick it to him. Didn't see him in the end. Went long and high. Chris Gannon, good mark. Now playing on the forward line, Chris Denner started on the halfback flank. Strong mark. Not a big play, but you can see there getting up in front of Lockyer. From 30 metres out, drop punt. As he squeezed it in, he has. Denner's first goal for the season. And it's 11 9 to 14 9. The Bombers back to three goals. Well, he's a courageous player, Chris Danaher. Had a late start to the season because he had a knee injury in that international game in London last year. And resumed in about round three or four in the reserves and has just come back into the senior side. The Bomber fans showing a little bit of voice again. Well done, Ke uh, Irving. Irving to the half forward line here's Paul Hamilton always come back into trouble oh, oh. wide hand pass two puts pressure on those defenders Fox though gets it out the wizard let's hope they can well, score another quick that run material. towards the half forward line it goes Turnbull sweeping hand pass he finds Corey Young a 40 metre hand pass but in the meantime there's a holding decision against Chris Lewis again I no, think. no 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 it was Matera Matera and Ezard it was Matera who laid that strong tackle Ezard went back and remonstrated and Matera is the one who got ping well down it comes towards Kranzberg he's got to get in a hand pass here he loses it in the tackle and it'll be a throw in at half forward for seven the Bombers. Minutes, seven minutes left. Well, they've hung on really well, isn't they? Haven't they? I mean, oh, great performance. had the feeling that the floodgates would open at one stage here, but it certainly hasn't. And who knows if they could get another one in the next minute or two. Lamb, O'Donnell's tackle out of play. But uh, West Coast look like they've got all the answers today, like they've had all season been a good match for them because it's been the first time they've been challenged for such a long period in the game for the year. Wanganeen, clever in the end to O'Donnell. Well played. Harvey goes for goal. Great kick. It's a goal. Well, who knows, Don? It's just two goals in at 14-9 to 12-5. 12 points the difference. 12 points of dif difference, and we've got just over six minutes left. O'Donnell and a magic kick, a mammoth kick from Harvey. Look at that. 55 metres out. The Bombers will not lie down. They trail by two goals and they might go forward again here if Anderson can grab it. He can. He gets it to Fox and here come the Bombers again. Fox to Salmon. Salmon can't do a thing about it. David Hart desperately gets it out with a good hand pass. Guy McKenna wide. He's got loose men everywhere. One of them's Turley. Turley three, will go outside again. That's Matera. Back to Turley. Turley to the half forward line. In fact, he kicks it over the half forward line to the pocket. It's all Essendon across the face of goal. 
taken by Flood. He can steady and elect to give it over the top. Oh, oh danger oh, here, oh. though. Anthony Danaher, Izard, Fox. Oh, this is great play, Essendon. They've got a loose man out wide in Hamilton if he can get there. The younger and faster Kemp beats him to it. And Kemp goes short and finds Matera. From centre wing, goes to Langdon, finds him at the 50 metre line. Well, he's a thumping kick, Langdon. Looked like he was cramped at the end of the third quarter. At his best, he can make this. Goes short, looks for Young, misses him. Burns has got it. Can they counter punch here, Essendon? Spawn at centre wing. They've got to set it up. If they can get a goal here, there's plenty of time. Four and a half minutes, Somerville. Bailey, this is an important thrust here. Harvey. Look here, it's left salmon. No free kick to Harvey, and the crowd cry blue murder as Lockyer kicks it close to the boundary line. Good kick. And it's well, well done by Lockyer because he knew that Salmon couldn't run and he went up and assisted. Left Salmon 30, 40 metres behind. Well, the Bombers are 12 points behind. We wait for the footy to come back. Four minutes and 23 seconds remaining. Well, this would be one of the most magnificent victories of all time if they can do it. Very doubtful, of course, with just over four minutes left. They need to get a very quick goal. They had a chance a moment ago. Here's Wilson. Centre wing. The Eagles go forward again. Corey Young in front. It's thumped away by Burns. And over the line. That's a terrific effort by Burns. We saw how bad the injury was hurt when he got the full front of an Irving kick. He's got up and he's really played well since then. Simon Madden showing signs of tiredness. He was grabbed in that ruck duel by Langdon and Simon Madden was, has been magnificent all day. A wobbly kick to the centre of the ground. They need a mark. It's a mark to spawn. Time clock ticking down. Three minutes and 38 seconds in, left in this game. Oh no, kick it. One bounce. High one. Salmon's there. Somerville's there. O'Donnell thought he had it. McKenna, oh. well done, Cranesby. Kicks the goal. There's only a goal the difference. Unbelievable scenes here. The crowd's erupted. And maybe Don Scott, the great escape, is on. Oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. The West Coast kicked that goal. I thought it was just how far the West Coast. And McKenna here getting onto the ball well. Desperate situation, but cut out by Cranesburg. Oh, a point, a goal, a difference. How long? 13-3. Three minutes and 14 seconds. The ball, a new ball coming out. A new ball coming out. Three minutes and 14. Can this Essendon side get up? It would be a brilliant victory. Well, more importantly, can. can the West Coast hold on? Well, let's see who gets it out the centre. Madden. Oh, look at that. He set them all like Clansburg chasing after it against Matera. Matera had the pace. He chips it to Turley. Can Fox get there with Turley? Oh, oh they committed themselves, both players. Fantastic stuff. Corey Young gets it to Lewis. A great tackle on Lewis. And the umpire calls play on. Oh, players throwing themselves in. Well, the ball out of bounds. Chris Lewis copped a hard tackle. Oh, Irving hurt. hurt. Hines does the ruck work. Fox to centre wing. Kransberg. Wanganeen off the ground. Well done by Turnbull. Wilson, who uh, kicked the big goal in the last quarter. Madden again with a hip and shoulder. And this is what the West Coast got to do. Hold it up on every occasion. This is the best game I've Two seen Two and a half minutes years. left. Well, it's one of the great games. Oh, sensational game of football. 14-9 to 13-9. Madden, Langdon gets the tap. Off the ground by Wilson. Ezar. Still Ezar. Hamilton oh. got a bad bounce. Bailey to Hamilton. Can he crash the tackle? Wanganeen. They run it forward to Cransburg, back to Wanganeen. Still in play, Kemp's tackle good, now out of bounds. Just run out of space. Well, what about a draw? Wouldn't that be a ripper? 1.49. One yeah, 1.47, the clock ticking down. Can they make one last effort, the Bombers? Here goes Wanganeen. Good Brought tackle. the ground, is that a free kick? No. Up by calls, play on. Somerville gets it to Danaher. Oh, oh. look at that, a 75-metre kick. Salmon. And heard the two walking wounded 
And it's kicked out of bounds on the full. I think Noah was it touched off the boot. It was touched. And the time clock showing one minute and 25. And the margin is six points. Irving has injured himself against Somerville. Madden over the top. Quick kick away by Kemp. What an important ball this is between oh, Matera holding, and Hamilton. Hamilton holding. Matera's free kick. Well, he knew, Don, that once it uh, got to ground, he was in trouble for pace, wasn't he? And look at the Bomber supporters. They've roared today. Langdon well on the done, lead. Langdon. Worked hard, got it to half forward. Minute remaining. Langdon. Sumich on the lead. The chance oh. for Hines to kick the goal to finish it all off. The left foot misses, but an important point. That's as good as a goal. It should be safe now. 1-2 to Hines, 14-10 to 13-9. And Danaher to bang it back in. Oh, look at the kick. A beautiful kick to the centre of the ground. Somerville centre of the pack. Dwayne Lamb over the top to Mainwaring. Here's Danger. Mainwaring a high floater in towards full forward. Hines from the back as the flyer. The ball hits the deck. Hines goes to get it again. He's got backup support from Langdon. Langdon back to Wilson. Wilson hooks it back. A long floating kick but it is out of bounds on the full. 20 but seconds. Time is has run out for the Bombers. But uh, what a sight they've given the 28,000 or so that have packed the place today. The gates were locked before the first bounce. Danaher. To centre wing. Madden in the front spot. Still Essendon won't give in. Kranzberg. Kemp's tackle good as the seconds are ticking away. And that's going to be it. And the West Coast Eagles remain unbeaten. 14, 10 to 13, 9. It's seven on the trot. But Peter McKenna, there were two winners out there today. Both clubs, because Essendon today did themselves proud. I think football was the winner today, Bruce. That was a good old-fashioned clash. And full marks, uh, the Eagles had the great start. They were put under pressure. They came back again. But Essendon also, what a magnificent performance with all those injured players. And they didn't give up at any stage and made it a great contest. Yes, well done, Bombers. They probably, in many respects, deserved to win that match with all the injuries they had. And full marks to the West Coast Eagles, though, for hanging on. Sumich got five and Wilson two for them. And for Essendon, Madden three and seven two. The injury list reads rather long. Plain, hamstring replaced in the selected side. Heard a medial ligament, long broken ribs, salmon groin and Buick concussion. Interestingly, the official crowd there, 21,682. And as Bruce McAvaney said, the gates were shut. And speaking of Bruce, he'll be joining us after the break. There's still a few years till I retire. And sure, my company superannuation will be my golden handshake. But will there be enough in it to live well on? So I talked to my bank, Westpac. Their life company suggested I start a separate superannuation plan to top up what I've already got. Because these days, we've got to look after ourselves. You can bank on us. McEwen Super Money Savers are here, saving your car's engine with Valvoline XLD at $11.95 for 5 litres. It's a super money saver that can't be bought for less anywhere, saving you even more. You can do it with McEwen's, cause we've got a million things. Warning! Aliens approaching! Warning! Uh... The Out of This World Star Wagon from Mitsubishi. I don't know how you do it, how you find the time. You say there's nothing to it, but you do it all the time. You're a mother, you're a wife, you're my lover, you're our life. Ooh. Don't underestimate it, Medley. you ought to be congratulated. Medley. You ought to be congratulated. No AFL club in history has ever simply ceased to exist overnight. But if Fitzroy doesn't raise $800,000 by June the 30th, that's exactly what will happen. 
107 years, eight Brownlows, eight premierships will all be buried forever. Please help save the lions by sending your donation to this address or by phoning 650 because without your help, Fitzroy is history. Nobody packs more into a sun. In this week's Sunday Herald Sun, win a year's supply of groceries in the $15,000 Great Grocery Giveaway. And Bill Tucky tells what your car is worth and where to find the new and used car bargains. Plus, in your free seven days colour magazine, we'll show you 101 ways to save money. All in the Sunday Herald Sun. Have it home delivered. Nobody packs more into a Sunday. This is a story that must be heard to be believed. Welcome back to the AFL today. More football coming up shortly from the MCG, Melbourne and Footscray. But first go over to Bruce McAvaney. And Bruce, have you got your voice back, mate? That was a ripper. Just got it back, Peter. What a game it was. And, uh, Fantastic. Was a brilliant match. And uh, well, Gary O'Donnell's coming in tomorrow, who uh, was one of Essendon's best players. It was the walking wounded, and uh, I wonder if they'll have a team to play Hawthorne next week, but tremendous match, Peter. It gives you a real lift, doesn't it? Yeah, it certainly does. I watched it in here, Bruce. Uh, great game. Uh, and you've got a great lineup for Sports World tomorrow, too. And first up, Athletics. Yes, with Cathy Freeman, who's just come back from the United States. Cathy's going to uh, live and train in Melbourne uh, over the next uh, 12 months or so. She's uh, hoping to go to the World Championships uh, in Tokyo. She may know about that later on, and also the Olympic Games in Barcelona. And with Cathy as well will be Raylene Boyle who at 17 years of age won a silver medal at the Olympic Games, Cathy at 16 winning a gold medal at the Commonwealth Games. And speaking of much travelled people, Sandy's just got back from the Davis Cup and a little bit disappointing, John Alexander joined him and uh, really we could have won it. We were so close and we'll have Wally Masseur on tomorrow along with John Alexander to talk about that Davis Cup. So close but so far in the end, Peter, there. And plenty happening locally, Bruce, on the racing scene. A big day in Adelaide with the yeah, derby. It was a terrific day. I think we've seen the Melbourne Cup winner in Shiva's Revenge. He looks absolutely outstanding. He was wide all the way and able to go right on with the job and win. And, of course, the football panel coming in. A sensational day. No doubt Scotty Palmer will have plenty of news for you later in the replay. That's well, it, Peter. OK, Bruce. We'll join you tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Bruce McAvaney and Sports World tomorrow. Keep it a date. Set the alarm for 5-2. Well, third place Melbourne faced a danger game at the MCG today as it came up against the league's big improvers in Footscray. The Bulldogs haven't really done too much wrong lately. A gutsy effort at Football Park against Adelaide. Great win over Hawthorne at Waverley. And last Sunday taking the points from Richmond at the Western Oval. And throw in Doug Hawkins, 250th. And it could have been a recipe for a demon disaster. Melbourne, though, has kicked 150 points more than any other club this season. And with the likes of Bennett and Cuthbertson in front of goals, it's easy to see why. Campbell and Glenn Lovett came in for Spalding and Stretch, while for the Bulldogs it was McPherson, Wigney and Terry Wallace for Cracker, Kellett and Del Rey. Dennis Cometti and Sandy Roberts are our commentators, and tonight we pick up play with highlights of the first half. Good looking kick into this slight breeze. Steins up high, couldn't take it. Royal, busy again across to Leaping Libba, who opens proceedings with a goal. Not a good kick, touched off the boot. Steins has got it, claimed by Cullen. Forced to Glenn Lovett. The boots it back towards half court for the Demons. Owen in from the side did well. Cuthbertson in the congestion. Good hand pass to Bennett. Jackson, great goal. Towards Bennett territory in front of the pack. Jackson waiting for it to be spooned forward. That's the way it goes. Cleverly done by Sean White. And a very clever kick by Ricky Jackson. Swings it round to the rocket. And it came. What a good kick to finish. Owen directly in front. Pops another one through for the Demons. And uh, having his best season, Glenn Coleman. Ooh. Ooh. Georgie Artisan Baxter. An opportunity for the Dogs to score. Charles wins it down in front of Brian Royal. Light misty rain may make it a little difficult for the players. Oh. Beautifully picked up by Cameron. And have a look at that for a shot at goal. Oh. The youngster has booted a beauty. But Bratora gets it out to the advantage of Cameron. Can he do it again? He keeps it in. Atkins on the assist. Hart against the boundary line. Pulls it back. Footscray have got the numbers down there. Did Hawkins kick it or Charles? Charles is claiming it. It's a goal. Kevin Dyson. Going deep into attack with a drop punt into the square. Wind in front. Oh, looks 
a pretty good snap. It's a goal. Can't take it on the half volley. And again, Peter Rowe for Melbourne. Clears wide. Todd Viney's on the outer wing. And he's got a chance to run away. One bounce. Then kicks low in towards half forward. And a good diving mark taken by Campbell. Campbell's dropped punt. Oh, it looks pretty good. That's a very handy goal for Melbourne. Cameron inside the attacking 50. Wigney a half chance, couldn't control it. Hawkins somehow comes out with the ball. This will test him. Right on the boundary line, it's bending back. That's a magnificent effort. That's close. I think it's a goal. It is. Yes, it was a magnificent effort by Doug Hawkins, and at half time it was Melbourne leading by seven points. Let's go back to the MCG now, and we pick up play at the start of the third term. We started the second half at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. The Demons lead by seven points, 49 to 42. Wind wins it down. Terry Wallace is on the ground now. Off the ground by Atkins. Glenn Lovett gets the kick inside the attacking 50. Long kick. Cuthbertson over the ball, pushed off it. Jackson scrambles one about five metres forward. Cuthbertson in the grasp. Ford got it to Owen. That wasn't his intention. Melbourne get the first goal of the second half. Rod Owen, his second, and Footscray making a mistake and paying the price. No real authority in trying to get that ball towards the boundary line. Owen swooping and getting the quick kick. And a similar start to that of Footscray in the second quarter at that end of the ground. So back to the middle once more with Wind. And Steins with the bounce is not a good one. Terry Wallace tried to take it. He couldn't. Steins got a long handball over the top. Atkins unable to control it. Liberatore. Quick kick towards half forward. Uh, taken by Cullen. Plays on quickly to Coleman from 50 metres. Proppy kick in towards the forward line. Oh, Wallace juggles. Terry Wallace coming onto the ground for the first time. We'll have a shot. 35 metres out, almost directly in front. So the veteran the chance to reply. And he does. First goal to Terry Wallace. And a good one for the Dogs. 8-7. Plays 7-6. Gutty mark that one. Going back with the flight of the ball, Terry Wallace. Juggling it. And eventually raking it in. Twice best and fairest at Hawthorne, twice at Footscray. Back in the middle once more. With Wind and Steins. Better bounce. No decisive winner. Clark to half forward, but no one at home. And Steve Wallace takes the mark. His fifth mark for the day. Heads towards Glenn Coleman. Punched away from him, out in front of Atkins and Ford. It's the latter who takes it and storms through the middle. Long and low up towards the half-forward line. But a very good mark taken by Peter Rowe. Goes across the ground. Steins lurking in that area. Chip short to Sean White. Pumps it with the left foot over the centre. But only as far as Peter Foster. Dropped a heavy one earlier on in the game, but has recovered well. Foster goes to Ford on the wing. He's got Stuart Wigney on the right half forward flank. Runs his full distance, then kicks with a right boot. In towards goal, goes over the top and through for one behind. So the margin now is one straight kick. Tony Campbell to bring the ball back into play. He kicked a goal for Melbourne in the first quarter. Now back in defence. Wine couldn't complete the juggle. Viney tapped it away from him and then was quick to apply the tackle on McPherson. Brett Lover does well. Goes out the back door to Clark, the former bomber. Goes to the left half forward flank. And a good mark. Gee, Not yes. pay oh. to Stephen Phoebe, who is somewhat perturbed. And so too is the Melbourne crowd. They have been all day, haven't they? That seemed to mark. It was the ground that forced the fumble. 
Boundary throw in. Dyson waiting in front. Can't control it. Flicks it out. Brett Lovett, was he pushed in the back? Not according to the umpire. And another throw in. 8-7 plays 7-7. The Demons lead. Throw in on centre wing. It's cold but fine now. Had some rain in the second oh. term. Terry Wallace didn't have the ball and will get the free kick on the wing. Wallace kicked Footscray's last goal. Didn't see action in the first half. Kicks down towards half forward. Road waiting behind. Glenn Lovett, who's played well, scrambles a kick towards centre wing. Todd Viney, who's been busy, through the wing towards half forward. Foster in best position. Takes the mark uncontested. Runners outside. Licks to kick. Finds McPherson inside the centre square. Steve McPherson props. Little check kick. Finds Charles. Well, Charles was surrounded by four Melbourne players. McPherson took the risk and it came off. Justin Charles has kicked two goals already. An improving young player. Has great agility and normally a pretty good kick. And if he boots this, watch out for the war dance because he'll be wrapped. Charles kicks. It's close. It's home. And there it is. Inhibited young man. <laughs> Eight seven apiece. For money savers are here with the Stanley 600 mil level for just 24.75 for $17 saving. The famous Stanley 13 piece screwdriver set is down to 32.95. Stanley Duralock tape measures 16.95, save 15.55. Rotor 5 tray cantilever toolboxes are now only 37.95. You save $20. Stanley, Australian made tools. McEwen Super Money Savers are products that can't be bought for less anywhere, saving you even more. You can do it. ANZ Personal Investment Products make investing so easy to understand, the penny is sure to drop. Talk to your financial advisor or drop into ANZ to see one of ours. She dared to pose nude in the 1930s. She's been linked to men in Melbourne's high society. What we don't know is who murdered Molly Dean. Why have the police records mysteriously disappeared? And why have the police reopened the case? It all makes sense in the Sunday age. The Big Lounge is a chain of no-frills factory outlets and we're offering up to an unbelievable 60% off. That's up to a huge 60% off our normally low, low lounge suite and sofa bed prices. Have a look at these bargains. This is a genuine and massive stock liquidation sale. Race down or you'll miss out. Don't forget, we're offering up to 60% off. So you'll save big bucks at any of our seven big locations. Mulgrave, South Melbourne, Mornington, Geelong, Bendigo, Ballarat and Swan Hill. Welcome home, Flash. Tough week, eh? Ah, oh, great. Hey, leave us some. Didn't they feed you that? Only enough health stuff to last until I'm 50. Well, hopefully I'll have you eating healthy food long before then. Did it? Mum, when it tastes good, I'll be in it. Kellogg Sultana brand. Don't mention it's healthy and they'll eat it by the box full. For the first time on television. I want to sell top secrets. Valuable military information. The incredible true story of the most damaging spy ring ever. Mafia family like in the Godfather. A family who held the fate of the world in their hands. We're in this together. A family of spies. You just see what happens. It's more powerful, more riveting than any spy novel. Because this actually happened. If they catch me, I'm a dead man. Nissan presents Powers Booth and Leslie Ann Warren in a family of spies. 8.30 Sunday on 7. Centre bounce was won by Scott Wine. Advantage is paid. Suddenly the ball running the way of the dogs. Oh, oh. Royal goes down towards the half forward line. McPherson's kick under pressure goes out of bounds on the foot.
Peter Road to bring it back into play from the back pocket. Coleman got in front of Steins but couldn't take the mark. Atkins goes over the top towards Wigney. And together with the ball, he goes over the line. Melbourne looking to consolidate their position in the top six. Footscray hoping to keep their finals hopes alive with this game. McPherson, Beveridge. McPherson again. Atkins towards the boundary line. Beveridge. The Pretore could have been held behind play, but it goes on. Wine sets himself. Wallace, Royal, Coleman. Just gets his kick in time. Long, penetrating kick. McPherson. Too slow. Liberatore at the bottom. Brett Lovett could have been legged. He was, said the umpire. He will take it in the back pocket. Tony Campbell's got a big job down there, giving away a lot of height to Justin Charles. This is Lovett in the back pocket. Members side with a kick. Coleman's in front. Steins pushed in the back. No free kick. Yes, there is a whistle. Now the advantage is paid. Puts in all sorts of trouble, but they work it out. Atkins got it to Cullen. 55 metres out from goal. Cullen, that was ambitious. Paid the price. Glenn Lovett got to Viney. Well played by Ford. Away comes Rode. Road goes long towards half forward. Cuthbert's an out in front. Eppleston has done well in that duel. Got a timely fist in there. Winter has it hard against the boundary line. Sweeping hand pass back to Road, who's run on. Long kick down towards the kickoff line. Gow got a fist on it. Off the ground, Jackson. It's a goal. A bit of luck for the Demons. Jackson gets his second. They haven't had too much today. Gow got a fist on it, opposed to O'Dwyer. The ball hit the ground, and Jackson, always the opportunist, going off the ground. I think he shinned it through, but that was good enough. So Melbourne lead by six points. No rain now for probably three quarters of an hour, and I wonder if Darren Bennett may have an injury problem. Well, it could be the case. 61 plays 55. He ran off, didn't he? Wind. Could have been an arm injury. Wins it, but it'll be a free kick to go the way. Melbourne to be taken by Ford to Lyon. So Gary Lyon to send his team into attack. He's looking for the torpedo, didn't quite get onto it. Cuthbertson gets the hand pass away. Beveridge pulls it in towards goal. Hits the post. Luke Beveridge, eight kicks for the day. It takes Melbourne to 9-8. Leading Footscray, 8-7. Guy again. Brings it back into play. Foster from behind. Liberatore waiting down in front. Should be able to get it away to Eppleston. He kicks back towards the centre, but kicked blindly. And the mark taken by Sean White. He gets round Coleman, oh, showing extraordinary skills, and then spirals it deep into the forward line. At the back is Jackson. The boundary line may be too close. And we'll see a throw in in the left forward pocket. Well, the dogs come back, and Melbourne at the moment just seem to have the answer to keep their nose in front. As Jackson has another snap at goal. <laughs> Well, we've seen some miraculous goals from that end, and there's another one. First of all, it was Cameron, then it was Hawkins, and now Ricky Jackson with his third. Terrific goal, set up initially by his pace, but then the finish, as good as we've seen today. Cullen's off the ground, Georgiades is back on. Ricky Jackson has three goals. And Melbourne have skipped away once more. And they lead by 13 points. Just over 16 minutes remaining in this third term. Wigney. An unkind bounce. Lyon does well to Dyson. High kick. Well inside the attacking 50. Strong work by O'Dwyer. Body to body. And he was able to complete the mark. He's only about 25 metres out directly in front. Kick one so far. 
This to make the margin 19 points. Swings away right to left and misses. And missed that one. 10-9 to 8-7. That's been the case today. Generally, Melbourne have looked the more accomplished side. Footscray hanging on doggedly. That would have split them. As it was, O'Dwyer missed. This is Lyon. 60 metres out, pulls it back. Awkward bounce for O'Dwyer. Cuthbertson worried out of it by Hunter. And a further behind for the Demons. Ten ten. Plays 8-7. Paul Gow. Well, Foster's got to beat a couple here. Edouard at the front, line at the back. Liberatore at the bottom, gets it out of the pack. Wallace. Terry towards centre wing. Flicked back in by McPherson, looking for Wigney. Out manoeuvred on that occasion, however. Viney under pressure, goes back to Dyson. Dyson showing maturity beyond his years. Kicks towards the left half forward flank. Solid mark by Ford. And cop one for his trouble. Goes backwards to Eppleston. And he finds Wigney. Stuart Wigney. Kicks towards centre wing again. He wants Coleman, who may have got into the back. Royal is there, trying to surge it forward towards Atkins, who sits over it and gets one for pushing the back. Quick thinking by Simon Atkins there. Stabs into the forward line. Charles, good lead, good kick. And Justin Charles, sensing he's got a vacant goal square, heads for home. Road gets back there now with Hawkins, and Road takes a fine mark. Bounces his way out of defence. Well played, showing plenty of dash. He comes up towards centre wing. Coleman will back into the pack. At the rear was Wine. Gives it across to Liberatore. Puts Atkins under a ton of pressure, but he gets out of it. On to Wine. Here's a chance for Footscray to mount something. His kick is a poor one. An effective spoil by Glenn Lovett. Sees it back in the centre. Liberatore runs into Phoebe. Viney gets caught. Lyon under pressure. Did get the handball away. Ford is held and he will take the free kick. Andrew Ford alongside the centre circle. Kicks inside the attacking 50. Cuthbertson on the lead takes the mark. Will kick from just outside the 50. Just the one goal this afternoon. It's 24 for the season. It'll take a good kick. Has it got the carry? I think it has. It's a goal. you worry about your family if anything ever happened to me at least there'd be no worries about money you never really think of arranging life insurance through your bank Westpac Life made sure we had enough cover it even showed us how it works as an investment that's the beauty of it you can bank on us McEwen Super Money Savers are here, saving your car's engine with Valvoline XLD at 1195 for five litres. It's a super money saver that can't be bought for less anywhere, saving you even more. You can do it with McEwen's, cause we've got a million things. For instant heat that's hard to beat, go for Gold Air, portable, efficient and economical fan heaters. It's time to be the best, Gold Air. Gold Air heaters are available from selected electrical retailers, department and hardware stores. What's the surprise tonight, Bob? Bolognese with onions and garlic. Now close your eyes. I must have my secret ingredient. It's a spaghetti sauce in a jar. No, it's Lego's new Italian cooking sauce. Only Lego's is made to time-honored authentic Italian recipes and they use only the freshest herbs, the finest spices. Authentico. How do you do it? Lego's new Italian cooking sauces. That's how you do it. Ansett Australia's first-class seats are among the widest and most comfortable anywhere. And now you'll find them in business class. 
So now there will only be two seats abreast to give plenty of arm and leg room so you can work in comfort or just relax and enjoy the flight. And if you like the look of our business class, just wait until you see our new first class. If your business means flying, try Ansett Australia. We'll take better care of you. No AFL club in history has ever simply ceased to exist overnight. But if Fitzroy doesn't raise $800,000 by June the 30th, that's exactly what will happen. 107 years, 8 Brownlows, 8 Premierships will all be buried forever. Please help save the Lions by sending your donation to this address or by phoning 650 because without your help, Fitzroy is history. Hinch, presenting you with your world. If it's a story that should be told, it will be told. He said you'd tell them they didn't wear their squash stickers. The sheriff would follow your price. They may have told me that far away. The faces and places of tomorrow's headlines. Weeknights on Hinch. Can this team of showbiz performers outshoot a posse of pro basketballers? Which of these celebrities can spin to win? The stars play for you next on 7. Five goal term to Melbourne, 12 14, 86 to 8 9 57 at three quarter time at the MCG. As we go back to the G now and some highlights of the final term. Pumps a high kick up towards half forward. Coming over the top was Gary Lyon. Now he's producing his class. Up towards full forward. O'Dwyer, the big long arms out in front. From 30 metres out. He shoots towards goal and puts it through. It's a rare appearance over the MCG. He finds Glenn Lovett. The spearing hand pass goes in towards half forward. Here's a chance for Clark. He goals. Invasion. Certainly ran his 15. O'Dwyer! Well, what's he done to the Melbourne fans? Across to Cullen. Wigney from behind. Can't take it. Shot in towards goal. That looks like another one to Glenn Coleman. Not a good kick. Lyon had to scramble, shoveled it out backwards. McPherson was hurt. Baxter comes away with the ball. With a sweeping hand pass on the outer side to Stuart Wigney. Still outside 50, Wigney. Could have a bounce or he runs his full distance from the 50 metre line. Shoots it towards goal and that's a fine kick by Stuart Wigney. And Melbourne just a little bit too solid in that game at the MCG for the Demons. It was three goals to Jackson, Owen and uh, Dwyer. And for Footscray, four to Charles and two to Hawkins. 39-point winners. Melbourne, let's check the other games today out at VFL Park. Hawthorne got the better of the Blues in very wet conditions out there. Six goals to Morrissey, three to Ayres and three to Anderson. And for the Blues, four to Arsiri, two each to Kernahan and Dorotich. Detroit and the Sydney Swans, and easily it was done by Sydney out at Princes Park this afternoon. And for the Swans, Williams got five and Love five, three to Carroll, and for the Lions, three to Wielden and two to Lyon. And in the remaining game played today down at Cadinia Park, Geelong, North Melbourne, a barnstorming finish. The run out winners 22 18 to 17 17. And for North Spargo got five, Carey four, Longmire four, and for the Cats, Brownless four and Neil four, a runaway victory to North Melbourne in the final term. Scott Palmer coming up next. We'll be back in just a moment. Ever since we've redesigned our service stations worldwide, something's happened. Millions of new customers have switched to BP. But more than just a shiny new station, these drivers have discovered BP's advanced fuels and oils for optimum engine performance and the convenience of BP's car washes and shops. So you see, our new green stations brought them in. But it's everything else we do that's bringing them back. BP. On the move. Jerry, we have to talk about this. Sure, mate, but not now. Well, it's a problem that won't go away. Yeah, but it's a stock problem. Leave it to me. We don't have a stock problem, mate. We have a communications problem. Well, how do you mean? Well, the branches can't get us the information we need quickly enough. We're learning too little and hearing it too late. I know, it's a bit of a mess. They're also screaming that half the time they don't know what we're up to. I've told you we're looking at it. Well, maybe it's time we got some help. Or call in someone. Well, it's a specialist field. We don't know what's available. But who does? 
Who would you trust to do the job? Well, there must be someone. We have to find them. Okay. Let's get on. There is someone. Next time you receive your fixed term deposit notice, tell them you found an alternative. IOOF Super Saver 2. Discuss your options at your local IOOF branch now. Mmm, delicious 100% meat recipes. Tastier diced meat dinners in sauce. Now, more than ever, my dog is guaranteed to tempt fussy eaters. JB Hi-Fi have gone cheaper than ever on compact discs. They're selling top 20 CDs for a crazy $18.99. Can you believe it? Top 20 CDs for $18.99 at JB. All stores are open till 9 o'clock every weeknight and all day Saturday. They all carry thousands and thousands of CDs and boy are they cheap. They've got rock, classical, jazz, pop, anything you want at the cheapest prices anywhere. And listen, don't pay $28 for your top 20 CDs because they're just $18.99 at JB Hi-Fi. JB, you've done it again. Introducing Gavin Brown and Danny Frawley for Scanlon's 1991 footy cards. It's a great game, Rowdy. Yes, bud, and it's great collecting Scanlon's footy cards. This year, Scanlon's The Original Footy Cards are better than ever. So start your collection today and you could also score instant prizes like Burley Seacombe Guernseys or official Burley Seacombe Club socks or free card collection holders. See you at the grand final then, mate. Count on it. Start collecting your Scanlon's footy cards today. Jane, it's still in the shower? She'll be ready when the hot water runs out. Vulcan Gas Freeloader. 73 days free gas hot water, year after year. 73 days. And for Vulcan Hot Water, let's go up to the Herald Sun now and sports editor Scotty Palmer on a big day. The attrition rate at Windy Hill, mate, it was unbelievable. Yes, it was, uh, Peter, and Kevin Sheedy bounced right into that campaign for three or four more interchange He'd plays. have to get it now, wouldn't he? He'd have to get in. Of course, he had the, uh, the good cause today because uh, they were walking wounded out there at Windy Hill. He finished with 16 men. Michael Long's got cracked ribs. Uh, Paul Salmon's got a torn groin. Shane Hurd's done his medial ligament. Could be 10 or 12 weeks. That put some uh, strain on the state selectors. Buick's concussion and uh, Plane pulled out before the game with a thigh injury. So he's got good cause to uh, put his forward his case before the meeting uh, this week of border management. Obviously Mick Malthouse would be pretty happy even though Essendon was very depleted. He said he praised the courage of both sides today and he said Essendon played like men possessed when they were injured. But he, um, he didn't quite say it, but a few of the West Coast Eagles were pretty unhappy with the free kicks that went 14-2 uh, to two Essendon's way in the second half. And a couple of them weren't too particularly pleased with the, the lack of protection uh, that uh, Sumich got, so they claim. All right, well, what about uh, injuries now? Because uh, the state team could be uh, decimated because uh, Brereton was injured out at VFL Park. Yes, he damaged the same hip that he uh, suffered against the Adelaide Crows when he collided with McDermott and got five weeks. Alan Joyce t said it took about two or three weeks to get over that one. And so it looks like uh, Dermy could be in doubt for the uh, state side as well as, as Salmon and Hurd. So it's going to put some extra strain on them. We had an amazing finish down at Cadinia Park. Uh, what was Malcolm Blight's reaction? Well, he actually took them into the uh, rooms immediately afterward and he showed them a video of the last quarter. During that last quarter, he said his guts turned. And obviously <laughs> he, said a few, he said a few nice words to the uh, Cats. But he came out rather calm and he said, at least we've played three quarters. He said, maybe we've taken a step forward. But Schimmelbush, very pleased the way the, uh, the Northerners just finished on. They were 40 points down at one stage and just kept coming. Well, Lions supporters had little to cheer about, uh, Scotty. In fact, I believe the team was booed at half-time. Yes, they were booed as they walked off the ground. And uh, the coach, Robert Shaw, said, you can't blame them. The people pay and they're entitled to boo if they don't think we're doing a good enough job. He was a bit pleased with, uh, a bit more pleased with the second half, but he said by then the scoreboard was uh, suggesting a Swans win anyway. Leon Wiegard went into the rooms after half after the match and uh, said to the uh, boys, look, we have to show commitment from now on, otherwise the team is going to be in desperate straits. Just quickly, we've got one game to go, that was at the MCG. Yes, Terry Wheeler had a debriefing session for 40 minutes after the match. He said we just have to work uh, harder for four quarters. Northy very, very pleased with Steins' effort. Great game, he said, and of course, we've got a bit of news that Ronnie McKeon could be playing with a Collingwood team very, very soon. Peter. Good on you, Scott. Back to you, mate. <laughs> Keep punching. OK, that could be good news for Magpie supporters. And, of course, they play tomorrow. Two games to complete the round. Brisbane Bears at...